trying to keep these creeps contained. Here's your spooky spot in NECA Toys Universal Monsters, the second edition toy capsule collectibles. This is the second edition. I have already looked at the first edition here on this channel. Feel free to give that a ghoulish gander if you have a little bit of time on your hands. I did actually have to pick this up online as we don't have these kind of things circulating store shelves here in Canada. I ended up having to order this over on eBay. And I'm probably sure I paid a little bit more of a penny to get a couple of these in my hands. Now you get a whole bunch of them, but unfortunately, as you can see, most of the contents, the trinkets inside have already freed themselves as these capsules don't do the greatest of jobs of actually staying together. They really should because the whole idea is these are things you're going to be throwing around to grab bags as trick-or-treaters come to your door. Some have said like some of the things inside notably are a little more on the cheaper side and probably not really worth the value, but you really have to consider this as well. These are going to be things you're going to be throwing in trick-or-treaters bags. I would much rather this instead of a snack size Snickers or Mars bar any day, especially Mars. I think those things are disgusting. Anyways, we're going to go open these up, and hopefully the majority of them have still been sealed. I mean, as you can see, there's a shoelace floating around. There seems to be a Bride of Frankenstein something down below. But we're going to open up and have a look at each of the capsules. Uh, by the way, on the front of the bag, I'm assuming this to be the front, is the, the Gill Man, the creature from the Black Lagoon to the, to the right. And then on the back side, another four characters to greet us. There's the Bride of Frankenstein, looking like she's whispering something into Frankie's ear. They've probably gone to visit friends. She's having a blast and she's whispering in her ear, we have to go. Have you ever had that happen? Somebody whispering in your ear, we have to go and you really don't want to go? That's a tough call to make. You can either leave now and upset your friends or you can stay and upset your significant other for the rest of the night. There's also, again, there's the mummy and creature from the Black Lagoon. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to grab a knife just off to the side. I don't really technically need it. You know what? Can we do this without a knife? Let's try to do this as a safe, safe non-knife unbagging. We're going to go ahead. There's actually a little perforation up the top corner there, and we're just going to use that and follow it all the way across the top and open that up completely. Yeah, it looks like most of the stuff has already been opened up. I don't know how this really happens. I'm going to pull it one at a time. These capsules, for all intents and purposes, should be snapped together. And, you know, they actually stay together pretty well. I don't know if they end up getting crushed. Maybe some pressure when they're putting them in the boxes. The pressure maybe is more than enough just to actually separate the layers. On one side, you've got embossed the Universal Monsters. On the, on the bottom is white. Of course, the top is green. A little air hole there to the top. So if you get that in someone's mouth, for example, they're still able to breathe. It's one of the reasons why they put a hole in a pen cap. Anyways, we're going to open this one up, even though we already kind of had an idea as to what exactly is inside. And what we have here is the mummy. More importantly, it's a mummy clip. I'm going to see if I can open up the bag completely so you can get a better idea of what this looks like. Now, again, you may look at this and think to yourself, ah, I don't know, is the value really there? Well, I mean, if you were to, say, pick these up in a vending machine, for example, 25 cents or about, was it, what was a vending machine now? Wait, I've just dated myself by saying 25 cents. I think vending machines now start at the dollar point. And they go up to a dollar, two dollars here in Canada, so you have to use your toonie. Yes, our two dollar coin is called the toonie. Please don't make fun of us. But you can see that there's the mummy clip. He's a rubbery piece of plastic and printed on the front. It looks like the mummy has taken a nap, a bit of a slumber. And then there's a clip on the top that can clip onto a knapsack, for example. I guess you could clip it onto a shoelace, too, if you wanted to. Anywhere that has the means to clip on things, you could clip this on there. On the back, it says USC LLC. But again, you know, it's not bad to, to have this thrown into a bag. I would much rather that than some of those disgusting candy bars that have come out. I'm going to close this quickly. Nobody saw anything. Nobody saw a single thing. Opening this up. And what we have here seems to be a sticker. This is the resulting of that night. Remember when she was whispering in his ear, I think we should go. Frankie decided to stay for a couple more drinks. Well, this is the result. You can see that their marriage has broken up. Frankie is now staying with friends. Bride of Frankenstein's been staying with her friends, and her friends have been telling her this whole time, you know, you're, you're, be you're better off. That guy, he was no good for you. He was no good. Uh, anyways, it is a sticker. I really like the way they've actually made this sort of a 
kind of an illustration I, I, or a cell shade. You can see that in both the cases, they actually have green skin. Bride of Frankenstein has her notable little swirl in her hair. Look, pretty cool looking sticker though. And we're going to put that to the side and add it with the, uh, the mummy. We're going to actually just grab these capsules because I don't want to make too much of a mess as I'm doing this. The next one, again, already opened up, although we at least get the bottom of it so we don't know exactly what it is. You would be given this in, in a bag like that. I mean, you could just literally throw these. I mean, I, I would think they'd be hard enough that you could throw them into the bag, providing you don't throw and hit the kid, the poor kid in the face. Just get, The kid then gets to go home, opens this up. And providing they like a Universal Monster, if they don't, I mean, obviously this is going to be a hard sell anyways. But if they do, like, say, for example, like Universal Monsters, then the kid would let out a scream. Parents would think right away there was a razor blade in their candy. No, 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 it's not that. Dad, I got myself a werewolf keychain. And once again, it's softer, like a rubbery plastic that they would have used. It might even just be rubber. You can see printed on the front is the is the Universal Monster Werewolf, Wolfman, Wolfman. Uh, nicely all colored here. Well, I say nicely colored is all printed here in white. But at least it's nicely detailed. And again, you've got yourself the little keychain, so that can, of course, clip onto your keys. I suppose you could technically as well use the mummy and use that for a keychain as well. That would just hook onto the keychain. You have yourself a little collectible going, a little collection of rubbery characters put that to the side. Uh, I don't know what belonged to, what capsule had the shoelaces, but seeing as the cat's already been let out the bag, we got ourselves some Frankenstein. Let me flip this around so you can actually see. Oh, I've got them facing both different ways. Frankenstein shoelaces. I think the shoelaces we got from series one, somebody can correct me certainly down below, were Dracula. We got ourselves now Frankenstein. I love the way they've actually printed this in a darker green. Uh, but it's a regular shoelace. I mean, even you can see on the end there, it's wrapped around and encased in that plastic tube. But it's, the material is kind of hard to describe. It's very smooth. It's like silk to the touch. You can see there's Frankenstein's shoelaces. Does Frankenstein even wear shoelaces? I guess not. He has those big clunker boots, right? Our next capsule feels like there's absolutely nothing inside of it. Opening it up. And sure enough, at least there is something inside. We've got ourselves a Wolfman rubbery bracelet. I'm going to put this on my wrist right now. It's not too warm right now, so I don't think I'll be sweating up a storm. There we go. All right. Got myself a Wolfman bracelet. Oh, that looks nice. I like that. Close up the capsule. Put that to the side. See what else we have going on in here. This one is heavy. What exactly is it? What exactly is it? Might be a racer. Might be a rock. Might be a small heart. Oh, that's a really tiny heart, though. Let's see what we got here. It is, in fact, an eraser. Got ourselves Gilman, or the creature from the Black Lagoon, as an eraser. A fitting color, I feel, for uh, the creature. Of course, you've got more of a neon green color. Sometimes I've had erasers in the past, even when I was a kid, that were too good of an eraser. Like, it looked too good to use it. You know, you ever have something like that? It's you buy it for an intended purpose, but it's too good that you don't want to use it for that purpose. Anybody have an example of that? I actually had some uh, Generation 1 Transformers erasers. I had, I think, maybe it was Soundwave. It was too good that even when kids at school wanted to borrow it, I said, no, you, you can't borrow this eraser. You can use the, the, the standard pink eraser. Well, can I use your Soundwave erasers? No, no, you can't. You can use the regular cheap pink eraser that the teachers give all of us. I feel like I'm, I would almost be in the same category here for the for the Gill Man. I, I don't know if I really would want to have used this, wear this away. I mean, obviously, I know it's for erasing things, but I think the biggest mistake, so to speak, would be actually to use this to erase mistakes. It would have also been nice if they could have printed it on both the sides, but actually they only put it on just the one side. We'll put that to the side anyways. Maybe this was the thing that held the eraser, as you can, or the uh, shoelaces. Okay, we can stop doing that. That has nothing absolutely inside of it, so we're going to put that to the side. This one also is already opened. What's the deal with this? If I was to pretend, like, nobody knows what the surprise was inside, I could open this up. Everybody just pretend for a second that they're excited. All right, I know you were, that was just, that's for pity. Inside, we got ourselves Dracula. I don't know if this is, is this right? I mean, there's all these eyeballs. I would have to, is there, is there an original poster that looks like this with, like, Four sets of eyes. This part looks okay. This part, well, if I was to cover this and cover the sides, I guess that would be looking right. But there's all these eyes everywhere. This is a patch, by the way. So you could sew this onto a jean jacket. Any place that would allow a patch, you could probably sew that. Don't sew it directly onto your arm. 
especially if you change your mind. And that, that's just a lot of work to get that patch back off of your skin. But a pretty cool looking Dracula patch anyways. Even though it's got multiple eyes. Is that right? It's got to be right. It's got to be. Uh, we've got a couple more capsules left to go. One we already saw from inside. Hey, hey, hold on a second there. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going to go take a walk. Uh, this one was, we already saw what this was, although we didn't really know what exactly it did. What purpose did it serve? This is the Bride of Frankenstein, but I believe it's a magnet. Opening up the back here, just to slide this out. Yes, I still have, if anybody was curious, my Wolfman. I still have it on my, on my wrist. And we got ourselves like a cool little Bride of Frankenstein magnet. It does say Frankenstein. Actually, it says Bride of Frankenstein. It was a little harder to see because it was printed over top of her face. I like that they've colored her kind of that bluish, kind of that purplish blue. And she's got like a purple, I guess, purple top. And all the font is purple also as well. It says, warning, the monster demands a mate. I kind of had a hard time reading what exact, what exact letter that was. But I think it says, the mon warning, the monster demands a mate. Although it kind of looks like the S is actually a Y. So it would say the monster demandy a mate, which would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. But that is a magnet, so that's going to stick onto the fridge. This is one of those things that has a purpose, and I don't mind using it for that purpose. Because even putting it on the fridge, it's not going to get ruined, right? I mean, it's it's right there. Unless you have it in front of a sun, and I guess sunlight will fade that over time. We've got one more thing inside, and that's it. That's all that's left in the bag. And at least this one, we can wrap things up by saying we opened up a capsule that still has its prize inside. It rattles, so I know it's denser. It's not shoelaces. Shoelaces don't make that sound. Let's open it up and see exactly what we got. And the last thing, one of the cooler things if you ask me, is a Dracula pin. Now, speaking of jean jackets, we were just talking about patches not that long ago. Imagine putting Dracula pin on your jean jacket. You could put on like a name tag. Could you imagine if you worked for a retail store that instead of having your name up there one day, you swap your name badge out for one that says Dracula? Somebody's like, "Sir, can, sir, can I get a, can I get a, can I get a little help over here?" And you, yes, go ahead. What can I help you with? Yes, um, Dracula. Is this a good office chair for my room? Let me just have a look at that. Can you check in the back, uh, Dracula, to see if you have any of these in stock? I'd be most happy to do that for you, sir. That's a pretty cool looking pin. That might actually be my favorite thing I think I've got inside all these capsules. In fact, talking about the things that we got inside the capsules, once again, got ourselves a pin. I'm going to see if I can retrieve all of these. Got ourselves a Bride of Frankenstein magnet. Let's, of course, not forget the fact I did get myself a Wolfman rubbery bracelet. Got ourselves also a Gillman creature from the Black Lagoon eraser. I so don't want to use that. Got ourselves also some shoelaces. And we also had inside a patch with multiple eyes Dracula. We also got inside a mummy, which I believe was the very first thing we looked at. A little mummy clip. Speaking of things that are rubbery, we also got ourselves a Wolfman keychain. And we also, I think that's it. I want to just make sure I'm not missing anything. We also did get ourselves a sticker. Frankie should have just listened to the wife when she told her, we have to go. Frankie said, nah, no. Ah, she's good. She's good. Can I get another drink? Yeah. <laughs> right down the middle. They're going to be living off on their own. Frankie's going to be the one that's going to struggle a little bit longer because his place, he always keeps a really messy place. Brad was always the one that kind of came around and cleaned up after him. Now his place is going to look like a disaster. She's going to start taking up yoga. She's going to have the better life of the two. But that's a sticker. We also got ourselves a sticker. What was the favorite thing? What was your favorite thing we got inside the Universal Monsters Second Edition Capsules? Do you let me know down below. Maybe you even let me know what your top three were of the things that we looked at. We didn't get ourselves any heads for figures. That seems to be the territory we had a look at both the Chucky capsules and the Michael Myers capsules, both of which we've also had a look at here on this channel if you did want to check those out. But let me know down below your top three favorite items inside the Universal Monsters Second Edition. And certainly as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. If you're loving the content and do want to stick around for more, because just between you, me, and that creepy looking owl that's been staring at me this whole time. What do you want? He's looking at me even harder now. 
Uh, certainly, if you did want to stick around for more, then hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification while we have wrapped up things. No mummy this in this time around. While we have wrapped up things for the Universal Monsters 2nd Edition, there will be more spookerific reviews coming your way during the month of Spotober. That owl is still looking at me. As always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.